Hey everyone, Josh here with a look at another Star Wars toy, and today we're going to unbox a 3 and 3 quarter inch black series. This is an Imperial Death Trooper from Rogue One. So let's go set this guy free. Alright everybody, here we are today with a 3 and 3 quarter inch black series figure. This is an Imperial Death Trooper. And of course these guys made their first film appearance in Rogue One, so if you're I've seen Rogue One, of course you recognize these guys. And we're going to unbox this guy today, but before we get that far, I just want to quickly spin the packaging around, let you guys take a look at it. And not a whole lot to it, you just get a quick character description here on the back, and I'll go ahead and read that to you guys. Imperial Death Trooper. The elite soldiers of Imperial Intelligence. Death Troopers are encased in specialized Stormtrooper armor with dark ominous gleam and serve as bodyguards and enforcers for Director Krennic. And so if you saw the Rogue One, of course, you remember these guys pretty much were went almost everywhere Director Krennic went, except when he was talking to Vader and stuff like that. But, um... They're his little team of soldiers, I guess, is what they're trying to get, the point they're trying to get across there. And, of course, these are fan favorites because of the, I mean, who doesn't like dark black stormtrooper armor? I mean, it's it's freaking awesome. Come on. So, okay, you can see it comes with two blasters. You get a pistol and a rifle here. And we'll pop those out and take a look at them in a second. And... And, of course, we want to take a look at the Death Trooper himself. And, unfortunately, these guys don't film really well due to the all black um, outfit. Oh, very cool. I'm wondering if that moves. Okay, so, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm seeing first here is, of course, all the detail for the on the figure. And looking at the... Like you can see the ammo pouches, grenades, he's got this extra ammo belt, and you can see it's not molded to the figure, it's loose. But I don't really see where you can take it off, or if you wanted to. Because I know they make versions of them without all the ammo belts on. And it looks like here, and unfortunately it's just not filming that well. <laughs> um, if you look here... You can see what appears to me to be behind the pouches on his ammo belt. It looks like there's a way you can disconnect the ammo belt. Yeah, you can. Okay, but I don't know if it's going to come all the way off. It looks like you might have to pop the head off to get it off. And to be completely honest with you, what, what it is is the whole thing is one... One giant part, so... Like, you can see there's a little tiny buckle here that where you can strap it in underneath this little ammo pouch. And there you go. You can kind of see the, the little tab on it where you connect them. But then, it, then the straps go up to the shoulder part, and they're connected. And it looks to me like the only way you're going to get it off is you're going to have to pop the head of the figure off and to be honest with you I don't really want to do that well it's too late now I already started let's see here yep okay there you go so if you want to remove the and there you can see what a figure's head looks like when you remove or figure looks like when you remove the head and they just pop off um some of them are meant to do that and some of them aren't I don't really like doing it because I feel like I'm doing damage to the figure but there you go you can see the ammo um belt and shoulder pad all has one part so and none of these grenades come off they're just they're molded on there so you can see but they do look cool okay so here we go here's the figure and it's not really filming all that well but if you actually look his the little circles on his mask where his mouth would be and the eyes have like a greenish tint to them. It's very, in the eyes, it's very light, but you can see it a little bit more on the, the mouthpiece. You can see there's like little green circles. And the eyepieces of the mask actually have like a slight green tint to them. And then, here you go, you can see this little mechanism on the helmet. And I was wondering if that moves kind of like on Boba Fett's, but it doesn't appear to be. I thought it might have a little movement to it. 
But there you can see them. And yeah, these figures like this and Darth Vader, they just film really horribly because they're in all black. And, and it's just not a good thing for filming. Okay, so let's run through his movements real quick. Here we go. Let's see here. And of course, you saw his head was on a ball joint. So you have a little up and down wiggle. And of course, full rotation. And then looking at his arms, you have an up and down movement. And you're getting a little bit of restriction on the movement due to the shoulder pads on the armor or the shoulder plate. So and then you so there's your up and down movement at the shoulder. You have you should have full rotation. It's a little bit stiff, fresh out of the box. But full rotation at the shoulder. And let's see here. You have an up and down movement at the elbow and a rotation. And okay, you have rotation at the hand, and you have up and down at the or at the wrist. So you have up and down movement as well. And then coming down to the body here, let's see here. You can see the articulation and how they hit it under the armor plating. So I like when they do that because you know you're gonna have these points where the armor ends and stuff like that and that's a good place to put the articulation and blend it in and I like it when they do that makes it look more natural and then let's see here it looks like he might have waist articulation too no nope. okay and then he has another belt on with ammo and stuff and I'm trying to look and see here because it's not yeah okay actually this one's removable too so you can see the waist belt comes off and it's the same thing. You've got a little buckle, a little tab, and that's all it appears to do. So you can take the all the ammo belts off, and that's pretty cool. But you can see he has like a little cutout at his waist, and it doesn't look natural <laughs> at all. So I don't really think this one was meant to come off, but for some reason they made it so you could take it off. And then looking at his legs here, you should have a rotation at the hip, which he does. Which then you have a like side to side movement and then he has another point of articulation up here at the hip you can see it's it's right under the plate armor on his upper leg so you can rotate his leg in two points up here at the hip and then at his knees you have up and down and rotation and same thing at his ankles you have an up and down movement and you can rotate his feet as well so that appears to be all his articulation. And I want to go ahead and start getting these belts back on. Let's see how difficult that is. Because sometimes they are they come off really easy. But getting them back on can be a challenge. So let's see here. Okay. No problem. Snapped right together. Went right back on. Looks right. Now let's try this. Again, we're going to have to remove the head. And you put the shoulder pad on, and then wrap the waist, and it should buckle right up, I'm hoping. Very good. Oh, wow. Just for as small and as tiny as these things are, I'm surprised they went on so easy. Sometimes you have to fight these little ammo belts and things like that. But there you go. You can fully remove all the belts and put them all back on. It's not a big deal. Very nice. Very nice figure. Okay. So let's take a quicker quick look at his blasters here. And so here is the long rifle that he carries. And that's one of the things I'm kind of not seeing on here. I would kind of expect it with all the belts and holster and everything like that. He'd have a holster, but I don't see a working holster on him, uh, unfortunately. Okay, so you have the long rifle here. And you see it's like a gray color. They put a little bit of discoloration at the tip of the barrel, like heat discoloration. But it doesn't appear to have any moving parts. There's a little red dot painted on that part. Okay. Very cool. And then, of course, you have the Imperial Blaster here. And these guys make a lot of appearances in Star Wars. They're a pretty common pistol. I think this is actually the kind of pistol, kind of pistol uh, K2SO used at the end of the movie as well. So maybe if you have a K2SO figure, you can hand this off to him. 
If it would focus. Sorry guys, I'm, sometimes to get the camera to focus on these little weapons is not easy. It doesn't want to do it. Oops. Okay. So let's see how he interacts with these things. And we'll start off with the little pistol. And just to show you guys the difference in his hands, I want to show you the um, hand sculpts on him. So I'm trying to get him in a good position here. So you can kind of see how the hands are a little bit different and you got just your basic open fist and then you have your open fist on his other hand and you can see it actually has a trigger finger out. And one of my favorite features of the Black Series figures, how they do that. So let's see how he interacts with this. And sometimes to get those fingers to go in there, you got to work them a little bit, but to me, it's worth it because I think it looks really nice on the figures. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Not totally going in there. Yeah, it is kind of. It's in there, but it's not like poking all the way through. So. Okay. So there he is holding the little pistol. And again, you can see how the whole trigger mechanism and trigger finger line up. Very cool. I like it. All right. And then just real quick for, to be thorough, will he hold it in both hands? And to me, it looks like he's going to be able to. But there you can see the difference in that way he holds it in each hand and how... The trigger guard is more exposed and there's no finger in it and the gun sits a little bit higher in his hand, so that's all right. And then you have the rifle. We're going to see how he goes. And you can see there's no trigger guard on it, but they actually put a, a trigger on there. So you can kind of, I guess, poke his finger under there. And let's see here. Okay, so he holds it and... On mine, he doesn't have a real tight grip on it. You can see it's a little bit loose. He had a much better grip on the pistol. It stayed in there really well. But on the rifle, you can see. And I think the actual rifle is meant to go in his hand without the trigger finger out. And yeah, it fits much better. It's a much tighter grip. So just to show you what it looks like. Get this. Come on. There we go, guy. All right. So if you wanted to, you can have them double up on the guns. You can have them put one in each hand. Very cool. But he, for the rifle, he holds it in, in what would be his left hand much better. And it's in there. He's got a much better grip on it. You can see he holds on to it. They're not coming out. And that's what you want to see. All right. Very cool. All right, time for the final test of quality. Will this guy stand on his own? Very nice, very good. All right guys, there he is from the three and three quarter inch Black Series line. This is your Imperial Death Trooper from Rogue One. And thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the content I'm creating. And please subscribe to the channel. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.